Hey, hey! Welcome back to the Let's Play. Today, my friends, the looting extravaganza continues. We are finally going to head down to the underworld, to the right-hand side. We're going to explore the entire right-hand side of the underworld. We're going to see how many shadow chests we can loot. And then in another episode, we'll go ahead and do the left-hand side of the underworld. I'm doing the two halves in different episodes because there's actually more than just looting that I want to be doing down in the underworld. I want to begin on a very, very, very large bridge system that basically spans the entire underworld. That should make the Wall of Flesh a whole heap of a ton easier to take down. Even if I was to use a weird and wonderful loadout, which, by the way, is something I'd like to do in this series. At the end of the day, anything and everything goes, right? I want to try some weird and wonderful loadouts, maybe some stuffs that I've never used before. But before doing any of that, we're actually going to do the comment of the day. At the start here, Jedi Knight Samuel says a good way to prepare for the hard mode grind is to get a second Nazar and a second Bazaar pre-hard mode when they're easy to get and shimmering them to get their counterpart. That way you'll enter hard mode with four Ank Charm accessories. Yes, that is a fantastic idea. Let me just check on my supply right now. We should have, there we are, there's the Bazaar and there is the Nazar. Now, if you remember in the last episode, Terraria decided to completely go full jerk mode and drop a Nazar in a block that I am unable to mine. So... Yeah, that was fun. But yeah, honestly, I think that's a fantastic idea. I really, really do. And actually, it gives me an opportunity to do a little bit of a something something. A little something else that I want to do. Only I have been noticing a whole bunch of your guys' suggestions regarding going ahead and making a jungle arena ASAP. Not only can we take down Queen Bee in it, but we can also make some little plantera bulb growing areas. And that way, we're not spending a whole bunch of our time in hard mode just waiting for bulbs to spawn in. So, yeah, again, a very, very good idea coming from you folks in the community. So I really appreciate it. You know what else I appreciate? All of the love and support you guys have been showing for the series in the form of likes and comments and subscriptions lately. Thank you so much. Now, of course, keep those likes rolling in if you want to continue supporting this series. Hit the subscribe button if you're new around here and you don't want to miss out on my future content. And if you do want to go one further with your support, head on over to pythongb.com PC to check out my range of Apex gaming PCs. Or if you're more on the market for some Terraria merch, why don't you head on over to terraria.shop and see what they've got going on over there. And better still, you could use code Python for a whopping 15% off your order. So then, I think what we're going to do is we're going to start off with what I... I would consider to be the harder to get out of the two accessories, and that is the Nazar. Yeah, these little head guys. That's who I'm needing to take down more than anyone else. Hey! Good timing there, Terraria. You might have just caught the message saying that the traveling merchant has arrived. And yeah, we're going to go and see what he's got. But there we are. We've got ourselves the two Nazars. We could, of course, shimmer the second one into the counterpart accessory for the eventual Ank Charm. So then, let's go see what this gentleman has this time. Hey there, Mercer. What you got for me this time, eh? We've got ourselves the Lifeform Analyzer and the Stopwatch. I think we've got both of those already. Already. I like the fact that he's selling this bunny painting again, though. <laughs> and now, my friends, it's time for a trip down to our Shimmer Jungle House of Epicness. Let's chuck this bad boy in here. We should get ourselves... What is it? The uh, Megaphone. I think this is quite possibly the first ever time I've had the Megaphone pre-hard mode. All right. No way! That was like literally the third guy I killed and I got the bazaar already. Well, the second one. <laughs> wow. Well, thank you very much there, Terraria. RNG, clearly on my side thus far. Right, let's chuck this barber in here. It should be the medicated bandage or adhesive bandage, whatever it's called. There we are. So here we go. The counter curse mantra and the medicated bandage. Lovely. That is four out of ten. Accessories needed 
for the Ankh charm. All right, next thing to do before we head down to the underworld is a fishing quest, the guide voodoo fish. Now, some of you guys reminded me quite correctly as well in the comments area that I didn't go ahead and fish up multiple of the same quest fish in the last episode. Yeah, we should really get ourselves in the habit of doing that. So what that means for us is when we go down to our little fishing area, wherever that may be, uh, right down here, actually, I seem to recall making a bit of a lake. There it is. Yeah, once we do have ourselves the quest fish, then we will simply put it away inside our void bag. And I forgot to bring my fishing rod with me. Ugh. What a big old doofus brain I am. We're looking for some guide voodoo fish or whatever the devil they're called. I mean, bass, they're kind of nice for making food out of, but not a great deal of anything else. Armored K fish. Hey, nice to have a uh, growing supply of those bad boys again. All right, so there's the guide voodoo fish. Let's put that in our void bag. And let's maybe capture a couple more. All right, second guide voodoo fish. Very good. Shall we just say sod it and go for four of every quest fish up until I run out of each of them? I mean, I'm pretty sure we captured four bunny fish previously, didn't we? There's the third guide voodoo fish. But yeah, we can have three of each quest fish to actually hand in, get ourselves some goodies from, and then one for the quest fish museum. Rock fish. Ha! <laughs> We're gonna sell us a nice little hammer here, folks. There we are. All right, well, we certainly got ourselves a decent supply of fish there. Look at all the specular fish and bass we got. Got all of these crates here as well, giving us a nice little top up to our potion and resource supply. Nice. All right, and then we're gonna pick up this bad boy and yep, there we are, we didn't have it. We just got ourselves the little line right there east. We are east in our world. Ah, would you look at this? Platinum hammer, 59% hammer power, and the rockfish has a whopping 70%, and quite a lot more damage. All right, but Ski, what you got for me this time? An angler hat. I'd love to have myself a full-on fishing loadout. That would be so cool to have. Become an ultimate fishing master by the end of this series. All right, so with that done and dusted, it's now finally time to get down to the underworld. It's time to start going through some shadow chests. I mean, to be fair, it's pretty predictable what you get out of the shadow chests, the different weapons you can get, the Hellwing bows, Sun Fury, all that kind of stuff. But you never know. There might be some other bits of bobs that are quite handy. Maybe life force potions, for example. Yeah, well, would you? Ah, oh, jeez. No, hang on. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, 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 pick that up. I am not having the wall of flesh spawn on me right now. That's a big fat no-no. Shadow chest numero uno. What are we going to get? First time rolling, eh? It's a dark lance and a godly one at that. That's not bad. Meteorite bars as well. Who says you need to go mining for meteorite? Not this lad. You can just get it from chests. I think we'll pick up all of the shadow chests as we go along as well. That way we can keep a tally on just how many chests we've actually opened. All we need to do is look for all of the purple splodges on the map. For example, there's two over here. So that means not one, but two shadow chests in this next up coming hellstone house the big old yikes with this of course is the fact that we don't have an obsidian skull quite how that's wound up being the case i don't know but what i do know is that we should probably do ourselves a favor place down a wood block and we are pretty much immune to everything beautiful we just need to there we are place ourselves on a little wood block and then we're pretty much good to go Cool. But yeah, we should probably get on with making an obsidian shield, eh? That would be a mighty dang fine idea. Another couple shadow chests. This one has a flame lash already getting duplicates. And this one has a hellwing bow. <laughs> All right, not bad. Got an inferno potion, heart ridge potions as well. Cool. Another chest. And this one has a sun fury. 73 melee damage. Wow! What is it with this world and having shadow chests on top of blocks that will burn me? Hmm? Is that supposed to be like a sign of things to come or something? I really hope not. <laughs> Alright, here we go. There's yet another shadow chest. This one has another dark lance. And would you look at that? We're already up to eight shadow chests open. Probably worth mentioning, by the way, you can get shadow chests spawn outside 
of the underworld houses. You can get them spawn on some of the little mini floating islands above the underworld, for example. And of course, you can get them spawn on the far outer reaches of the map, you know, once you've cleared all the houses. You can still find them way over here, just probably not as much. Chest number nine, flower fire, treasure magnet, and one of my favorite potions in this game, the teleportation potion. <laughs> I'd love to play a game of where does the teleportation potion take us. Chest number 10. The Sun Fury again. 11 has another flower of fire. Starting to fill up our void bag now as well already. Good sweet lord, I didn't realize just how much loot you can get from the underworld. Oh, believe it or not, that was actually the last underworld house to explore as well. At this point, it's just a case of getting lucky and finding them as and when. Oh, yeah. I forgot about the existence of these bad boys. Ashwood. Another new building resource we can totally use. That's actually kind of cool. I like that. To be honest, there really doesn't seem to be a great deal of anything else going on down here, folks. I mean, yeah, we've got plenty of wood. And actually, maybe I should continue to pick some of these bad boys up. Only I like having more and more and more building resources. But uh, yeah, in terms of loot, I think we're actually just about there. I mean, look at this. We're now at the far outer reaches. We've hit the edge of the world. Very good. All right, so 11 shadow chests. That is what we managed to get from one side of the underworld. That's actually kind of nuts. It's not bad going. Not really. I mean, if you double that, we should wind up with, what, maybe just over 20 shadow chests? And now it's time to put everything away and take inventory of everything that we managed to get. Wow. I mean, look at this, for example. 116 meteorite bars. <laughs> I wasn't expecting to get that quantity of meteorite bars. Lots of duplicates going on here. I think what we're going to do is we are simply going to sell the lower end duplicates. The ones that don't have very good modifiers. And just like that, we've got a whole smorgasbord of new weaponry to use. The godly Dark Lance, the superior Sun Fury, the agile Hellwing Bow, the furious Flower of Fire, and a nice box standard Flame Lash. Love to see it. So then, I think I was mentioning in the last episode that I might want to change out my loadout to a mage one. And because we've got a whole bunch of meteorite bars from the underworld, we can do that pretty much straight away. So let's go for the full set of meteorite armor. We can also make ourselves the space gun if we wanted to. Two. But here's the thing. I think there's a better option. I really do. Also, I would quite like to make the Star Cannon because I would actually like to experiment with the upgraded version of this. And to be honest, it gives me an opportunity to do some more building because to more effectively grab a whole bunch of fallen stars, it might be an idea to take on the project of a massive, massive sky rail. Let the sky rail gather a whole bunch of fallen stars overnight and then towards the end of each night we just take a big old rail cart going from one end of the world to the other and we basically hoover up all of the fallen stars and use them for ammo yeah anyway what we're gonna do for now is we're gonna grab out the gray zap Nator. Yeah, baby. This is going to be fantastic. For any of you guys who don't know, I don't even know if this is like an intended thing. It doesn't mention that the Zappinator also costs zero mana. But even despite this saying, it uses 16 mana. It doesn't. Look at the mana bar. Top right. We're not spending a single bit of mana here. <laughs> It's kind of nuts, isn't it? Especially when you consider the damage difference between the Zappinator and the Space Gun. The Space Gun was only, what, like 17-ish damage, I think we saw? This has got 55, which is just nuts. Probably the most bonkers thing is we can still squeeze out a whole bunch more damage out of this bad boy. We have a good amount of money. Uh, wow. We just got that first time rolling? Damn! <laughs> Incredible. I'll take a quick rockfish. Anything to speed up our building process. I can't believe we just got that first time. It's almost as if the game wants me to give this a bit of a go against some things. So I've just purchased a mining helmet. And believe it or not, that finishes off our mining armor set. So that's another armor set we can call complete in here. We've got a nice little smorgasbord of armor in here, don't we? 
I mean, it's not just like class related stuff, is it? We've got all sorts of bits and bobs. Critical strike chance buffing stuff. We've got mining buffing stuff. Eventually, we'll have a fishing buffing armor. <laughs> oh, this is brilliant. So then, my friends, now that we've switched on over to a mage loadout, might it be an idea to see if we can't collect ourselves a few more gravestones, make ourselves the graveyard biome, and then maybe try to finally get for ourselves the band of star power. Ah, oh, that'd be such a cool idea. I guess the question is, where have we died the most where we haven't gone ahead and destroyed the gravestones just yet? I mean, I'm thinking the dungeon, to be honest with you. We died a few times in the dungeon, so maybe we just sort of pop on down there and see if I can't hoover up a few gravestones down there. I'm not going to purposely kill myself just to get gravestones. No, no, no. That's not how I roll. I am going to go gravestone hunting in the dungeon. That doesn't sound morbid at all, does it? <laughs> The reason I am doing all this, of course, is, yeah, we're going to get the Band of Star Power, but I'm pretty darn sure we have all of the accessories needed for the fabled Celestial Cuffs. To have those pre-hard mode is just incredible. Like, seriously, it is. We need, I think, the Shackle, obviously the Celestial Magnet. We got that earlier in the series, didn't we? Virus Sky Island. And there might be a couple of other bits and bobs that I need as well, but those are the ones that I can remember that we need right now, so... Yeah, let's see if we can get some gravestones. Come on. Huh, another water bowl. I mean, we are a mage, so that's actually pretty welcome. Ah, very good. Right, there's one gravestone. Oh, gee whiz. I was looking at the map and now there's another gravestone because I was trying to look for gravestones. All the gravestones. <laughs> the good news is we do have ourselves a sixth gravestone. I'm pretty sure we need one more and then we should be able to custom create a gravestone biome finally. Blimey, O'Reilly, 1,241 damage. <laughs> and that's pre-hard mode, ladies and gentlemen. Just remember that. This is pre-hard mode. I just did over 1,200 damage to someone. Just goes to show you the little line that says it might be broken. Yeah? It really rather is, isn't it? If it can do upwards of 1,200 damage in pre-hard mode. <laughs> That's so ridiculous. Ah, oh, nice. Another thing that will help expand our building repertoire. We have a bone wand, finally. We now can use these bones in building. Oh, that is so boss. Ah, there we are. I did remember we were up here trying to search on the map for more chests, and we wound up dying. So, uh, yeah, that's why there was a gravestone there. Hey, folks. <laughs> All right, very good. So we now have seven of these lovely little gravestones. Calling gravestones lovely. Yeah, all right. Not weird at all, but ah oh well. <laughs> so then, mana crystal was required in the recipe, I do believe. I've just got to chuck that in here. Band of Star Power Panic Necklace requires Tinkerer's Workshop in Ecto Mist. Just grabbing out all the other accessories I think I need. That should be just about it, right? Uh, right, Tinker Table. I need to go buy another one because the other one's down by the Shimmer, I do believe. And I don't particularly want to keep having to go back down there and pick it up. What can I say? I'm just lazy, folks. It is what it is. I mean, I work smart, not hard. So Tinker Table goes right there. Then we start going at it with all of these here gravestones. And there we are. Is that enough? I believe it is. Yeah, we've got the Ecto Mist. <laughs> nice. Obviously, this is only a little temporary setup. I would like to make a proper graveyard biome at some point, but there we are. That is what I wanted more than anything else. There is the Mana Regen Band. There's the Magic Cuffs. And there's the beautiful Celestial Cuffs. Turns out we had everything we needed the whole time. <laughs> All right. A very, very, very top tier mage accessory, my friends. And that might also mark the first ever time I have ever used Ecto Mist to get a band of star power. So that's a little something new that we've done, at least. Because the Celestial Cuffs is indeed a crafted thing, it means we can go at it with the free reforges by the Shimmer. So 
Yeah, this should be pretty easy. What do we want to try and go for on here in terms of a reforge, though? Only it doesn't really give us additional damage, does it? It's more so a utility accessory. Increases pickup range for mana stars. Very useful. Restores mana when damaged. So, yeah, that's pretty good. Increases maximum mana by 20. You know what? Maybe we should go for arcane. Then we can have 40 mana from this one accessory. You know what? I barely ever go for arcane. So, let's... Go for it. Let's do it. There we are. Beautiful. A grand total of 40 mana in one accessory. Boosh. 240 mana is that the amount we have. Haha. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. So I think on that rather amazing note, it is going to be time to wrap up today's episode. The Loot Goblin arc has come to a temporary close. Over the next few episodes, I'd really like to start preparing this world for hard mode. I'd also like to get a whole bunch more pylon builds and fishing lakes done. So yeah, it may seem like in the next few episodes I might be just delaying hard mode but believe me when I say I'm just trying to get a bunch of prep work done now while the world is still relatively easy to deal with rather than you know doing it in hard mode and suffering the consequences of hard mode enemies you know what I'm saying so yeah fishing lakes pylon builds a big old lava bridge thingy in the underworld it's all stuff i want to do maybe even a proper sized arena over at the desert perhaps maybe a jungle arena as well i think i was mentioning that earlier it's all stuff i want to get done before hard made my friends so yeah all that is to come but for now it's time to wrap up today's episode thank you so much for watching if you guys have enjoyed today's episode and of course you're excited to see more do be sure to drop a like beneath this video it really helps get these videos out there on youtube and it just helps out the channel massively it really does i'd very much appreciate it folks hit the subscribe button if you don't want to miss out on my future content but for now thanks for watching have a fantastic rest of your day and i'll see you guys in the next episode Bye bye